outsiders. I've been reading up about you, Chris. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you used to work at HMRC, didn't you? Yes. 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 And, and Granada TV as well. Oh, oh, that's all right. That's all right. right. <laughs> Northwest Company. And he was the first special advisor. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that bit. No, I mean, Go on. A bit, a bit more detail. Uh, I'm delighted. You, you've had the opportunity now to, yeah. to hear all of this conversation. I think it would be really valuable for us to hear from somebody like you who works at the national level some of your reflections, both on what you've heard and what you think going forward. So NHS Providers is the uh, membership organisation of the Trade Association for the 238 Community Mental Health Ambulance and Acute Foundation Trust. So Paul, you chair one, you're um, a non-executive director of one. Um, so, Sorry, how's that? Is that better? Fantastic. Um, so for me, I think the, the place to start is why is the accountability important? So £120 billion pounds of public money, I think it's about a, a sixth or a seventh of entire total public expenditure gets spent on the NHS. Um, it's clearly, as we all know, an absolutely vital uh, national service. It is, by the way, um, when asked the question, what makes you most proud to be British? Interestingly, it's the NHS that comes out top. And also clearly, very obviously, um, something in which kind of local communities have a very strong and passionate interest. So my argument to you would be that I think accountability feels to me to therefore be particularly important. So Andrew, I, I kind of absolutely agree with you in one sense about the vital importance. If you've got that much public money um, being spent, it seems to me blatantly obvious that the Secretary of State, the government, should be accountable for the spending of that public money. And I think you're also right to say that a Secretary of State should be um, um, capable of scrutiny by Parliament, but also individual members of Parliament for what goes on. However, for me, it's a little bit more nuanced than that, which is that I genuinely do not think that in an organisation which effectively has got one and a quarter million staff, is dealing with a very complex kind of delivery um, structure in terms of 211 CCGs, 238 trusts. It's talking about, you know, about a million patient interactions every day. I think for me, the danger of saying it's all the Secretary of State's accountability is that there is an implication that the Secretary of State should be responsible for making all of the decisions about how the health service runs effectively. And my argument would be that one of the problems in the past has been that far too many roads have led to the Secretary of State's office, which has given them an excuse to meddle and to interfere in decisions that, to be frank, should be far more and are much better taken at a local level. So yes, national accountability in many senses, but we need to be careful about where that accountability begins and ends. And I th personally think the Alan Milburn story is a really, really interesting one, which is when he first became Secretary of State, he believed that every single thing should be the responsibility of the Secretary of State, but at the end of it, he was really, really clear. This was too large, too complex a system to believe that every decision should be made by the Secretary of State. So there needed to be a, a strong element of local accountability for key decisions. So I think one of the things, if you're going to do this piece of work over the next year, I'd be really interested to see is where should the national accountability start and stop? So when you then come down to local accountability, I think all of the previous speakers I think have, have set out for you what I think is a very complex and diffuse set of accountabilities. So I thought, Andrew, you set out really, really well the, the, the key role that I think local government has played, not least because I think we need to think about this as a health and care system, not as just an NHS system. And if it's a health and care system, then you know local authorities as commissioners of care have got a key role to play. And I think I particularly welcomed your comment, which is certainly it would be an NHS perspective, that if local government and health and wellbeing boards and overview and scrutiny committees are prepared uh, to fulfil their role effectively, we need to support local councillors better and more effectively to play that role. Because I think one of the frustrations in the NHS is that actually we keep missing each other. You know, one of us is speaking Swahili, one of us is speaking French, and effectively we just keep missing each other. And therefore I think that training feels to me to be important. I'm very glad that we talked about CCGs, because I do think CCGs who actually commission the care do have an important role um, to play in, that, in this process. I'm also very pleased that you 
pointed to the foundation trust model because individual providers, it feels to me, should have an element of local accountability. And the whole Milburn principle about foundation trust was that you should have this new form of governance in which effectively you were allowed as a member, and by the way, it's not just acute trust, it's acute mental health, ambulance and community trusts who are foundation trusts. All of them have got members those members elect the governors and they do have the ultimate power to basically appoint people like Paul or as you say sack people like Paul but also to hold Paul to account and I can point to you as a number of instances about where those organisations, those um, governing bodies have held and they are drawn I think again brilliantly from there's a bunch of people who work in the trust, there is a bunch of patient representatives, drug service users representatives and there's a bunch of political representatives who sit on governing bodies so they are it seems to me, potentially a very useful way of effectively having the right level of accountability. Just to make the point though, not all, it's only foundation trusts, not trusts, so about, you know, 150, um, 160 uh, foundation trusts, but there's still about 100, uh, no, about 60, 70, 80 um, that are still trusts. So I think that model feels to us to be a very, very important model. The one that nobody's talked about so far is the replacements for the community health councils, which were effectively Health Watch. And again, I think Health Watch, um, it feels to us to still be a bit of a growing flower. It's a new flower, but actually I think the, the importance of the patient voice um, um, coming um, into the debate is very important. And Health Watch is the log logical place for that to happen. I'll just leave you with one final thought, which, which for me, because I do think these things are really complex and nuanced, they really aren't as simple as they might look. So when I look at our foundation trust, if you take the Central Manchester Foundation Trust, it's, it's, you know, it's got a turnover probably of something around a billion, it's got you know, tens of thousands of staff, it is a highly complex operation. It is absolutely being run incredibly hot at the moment in terms of it's under huge amounts of pressure. I cannot tell you how important it is that there should be really, really clear governance of that institution so that it, it runs completely like clockwork and that if stuff goes wrong, it's absolutely crystal clear who is held to account for things going wrong. It's also vital because these are, again, I, I, I really wouldn't, particularly in this audience, like to use the word business, but effectively they are highly complex organisations that run, that need to run, um, can only run if they're really effectively managed. And everything about management tells you that clear governance and clear accountability is vital. So the dilemma I think I would pose to you is, again, in your work as you go forward, is how do you get the right balance between, on the one hand, allowing those complex institutions to be governed really effectively and I would argue to you quite passionately that a single unitary board of effectively a combination of executives and non-executives acting as a single whole seems to us to be the most effective model but clearly it potentially lacks democratic accountability and legitimacy so for me the real question is how do you very effectively pair on the one hand the need to run these institutions really, and local systems really effectively with appropriate governance, but on the other hand, get the de appropriate democratic accountability. And my argument at the moment is that I think it's too diffuse, it's too indirect, and actually, you know, it's people, um, it, it doesn't seem to me to be particularly effective, but I think the, what you could very easily do is completely tip it the other way and say what really counts is democratic accountability, and then effectively not have the ability to have the clear governance that you need to run these complex institutions effectively.